Hello everybody. Uh, we are discussing about the solidification behavior of um, additive manufacturing process in specific to the powder based technology. So, we are continuing the uh, same thing but the different aspect of the powder bed fusion of course, the solidification but the different types of the materials we will try to discuss uh, in this particular sub module. So, here we see that additive manufacturing process definitely it is a high temperature gradient and the very high cooling rate is expected as compared to the conventional casting process or I can say as compared to the fusion rolling process. So, therefore, but the there is a wide difference in the this temperature gradient and, and, and cooling rate in case of uh, additive manufacturing process with reference to the casting process. So, here thermal gradient or, tem or temperature gradient range from uh, 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 7 Kelvin per meter and it can go for the uh, this thing uh, this the um, cooling rate can be 10 to the 2 to 10 to the power 6 Kelvin per second. So, this is rough and est rough uh, estimates that within that range it can vary depending upon the different techniques, the other parameters associated with the additive manufacturing process, but usually we can say that it is associated with the high temperature gradient and high cooling rate. Right? We know that this temperature gradient actually or and cooling rate as well, it decides the solidification morphology and mode of the solidification. So, that is why both are important parameters when you try to discuss the solidification behavior of the this additive manufacturing process. But one important aspect in additive manufacturing process is that what can be the conditions uh, prevails by choosing in the different process parameters such that the transition uh, from uh, columnar to the equiax uh, structure is possible. So, that is why the most of the studies associated with the solidification is try to focus on the what that how to or what uh, condition we can we can maybe define such that there is a CET then columnar to columnar to the equiax transition is possible. So, of course, uh, additive manufacturing process when you are talking about the solidification is more resembles to the associated to the laser oiling process because most of the additive manufacturing process laser is used as a heat source material and very precisely the laser can be controlled that is why most uh, preferable choice is the laser for the development of the additive manufacturing technology. Of course, other techniques can also be used for the arc based technology has also been developed, but if you want to develop some very precise component then laser is a better solution. Apart from that things of course, uh, if we look into the solidification behavior or structure it also decided by the molten zone shape and specific condition of the solid liquid interface. So, shape of the molten zone here because when you interact with the laser it definitely it will create some kind of the oil pool uh, that we can see uh, that uh, molten pool and which also we observe in, in case of the fusion uh, laser uh, in welding process also. So, here also definitely the nature of the solidification will influence by the shape and size of the this uh, molten zone when this uh, uh, interacting with any kind of the heat source material. And that specific thermal uh, uh, condition at the solid liquid interface. So, specific condition at the solid liquid interface is basically represented by the two solidification parameters one is the G and another is the growth rate. So, of course, growth rate is always resembles the the, the scanning speed or the oiling speed in, in this particular process. So, that is why here we mentioned that solidification interface velocity which is more equivalent to the, the speed of the laser or uh, uh, scanning speed or the speed of the arc. So, that is why G and R it is also equivalent to R also growth rate. So, both we can consider as a solidification parameter and always try to investigate what is the nature of the this ratio that we, we see we also that we observe what is the ratio of the G by R because it decides the mode of the solidification or what is the G into R because it decides the whether it is fine structure or coarse structure will be possible that is decided mainly by these two parameter uh, this uh, com combination of this G and R parameters. But in general when the solidification velocity is very high. So, that will try to suppress the delta ferrite formation. So, delta ferrite formation we understand the delta ferrite formation is almost uh, composition of the delta ferrite is very close to the very low per percentage of the carbon is there in, in case of the steel. 
So, therefore, if it is possible to at high welding speed suppress the delta ferrite formation, then it actually promotes the formation of the cracking suspectability or some kind of the mechan influence the mechanical properties of the steel weld usually we form. So, therefore, uh, if we try to understand the for in case of the steel, what can be the structure we try to focus on the what amount of the delta ferrite is usually forms and uh, even at this particular uh, this uh, cooling rate or at this particular G and R value associated to the additive manufacturing process. We will discuss more on the different structure for the different types of the different kind of the steels, what can be the solidified structure uh, of an additive manufacturing component. Of course, we in at this moment we are discussing of the powder based the raw metal uh, as a powder. Now, overall we see that this if there is a uh, the solidification we can explain in, in that way that if there is a rapid change in the direction, the heat source direction, the continuously uh, changing heat source direction and at the same time maintaining as a tight overlap between the melt tracks. In that case, transition from the columnar to equiaxed equi grain is possible because it is an interesting topic that how we can uh, transition is possible from the columnar to equiax grains by understanding the solidification behavior of this particular material because when it, it is if it is possible to the equiax kind of the grain we can we can create the near homogeneous properties or isotropic properties mechanical properties associated with the component so that's why always we try to do that uh, try to promote or the or try to find out the condition such that we can promote the equiaxed uh, grain formation in case of the uh, during the solidification. So, but it has to be controlled during the uh, solidification process. Now, it is observed that uh, different studies and of course, some uh, numerical simulation also perform to understand uh, uh, that in uh, what can be the primary growth direction associated with the, uh, the additive manufacturing process or what which direction temperature gradient will be the maximum or I can say that heat flow direction will be the maximum, heat flow direction will be the maximum in the direction in which direction the temperature gradient is the maximum. So, uh, these different studies we can see that in unidirectional scan the laser scanning in the powder bed fusion process. So, uh, the laser is scanning one direction particular in that case it has observed the primary growth angle. angle is usually aligned with the maximum heat flow direction or experimentally observed growth angle. So, experimentally observed and numerical also calculated, but usually primary growth angle uh, of the solidified uh, um, grain that will try to follow with the um, in, in case of unidirectional scan is the maximum heat flow direction. But in case of the bidirectional scan there is a we observe there is a some some uh, divergence in the angle growth angle uh, and is around 15 degree is observed. So, but that is over carefully uh, performing the simulation for the uh, solidification behavior associated with the unidirectional and the multi uh, bidirectional scan we can see that what way the, the solidification uh, usually occurs in case of the powder bed fusion. But it is this actually observed in case of the this uh, nickel or nickel based alloy uh, system. Here you can see suppose the multiple layer single track inconel 7180 position if we consider this the multiple layer, but the single track. So, laser scanning direction is the one particular direction. Here you can see the solidification structure is actually depends on the local heat flow direction. I can say that heat flow direction means the the other way the temperature gradient and competitive grain growth is usually occurs one of the 6 preferred growth direction in FCCL. We know that preferred growth direction for the FCC alloy we already discussed in case of the welding also fusion welding process the preferred growth direction having the crystal structure FCC is usually 100 in this particular direction. So, if this solidification texture heat flow direction depends on this thing then usually competitive growth occurs with the preferred growth direction 100. But uh, in certain point of time it might not happen some deviation might occurs in the preferred growth direction that we, we already see that bidirectional scan that might be some deviation with reference to the preferred growth direction. And here in the if you follow this figure we can see that heat flow direction is basically indicated by the yellow vector this particular and 
this direction is the solidification and the solidification front R at an angle is around 60 degree. So, that is also mentioned this is around under 60 degree and with the horizontal substrate sur surface over the, the horizontal substrate surface this uh, the heat flow direction is maximum heat flow direction is maintained by this this uh, yellow vector and you can see and with it makes usually 60 degree angle with respect to that. But otherwise the direction perpendicular to the trailing edge in this cases it means the about 30 degree angle with respect to the horizontal angle uh, with respect to the horizontal line. So, in this particular unidirectional scan it is observed that it is a competitive growth in the uh, in the preferred growth direction and preferred growth direction is usually in the same direction along the maximum heat flow direction usually observed in case of the, the uh, multiple single layer track in Cornell 718 deposition. And if you observe uh, this uh, bidirectional scan also and here you can see that solidification pattern for the bidirectional laser scanning we see that this is the how the maximum heat flow direction is changing, heat flow direction is changing, it is around uh, 60 degree and of course, uh, with respect to uh, other side it should be at 60 degree. So, the heat flow direction is something like that, it is, the, it is 60 degree and maximum heat flow direction is 60 degree, again uh, it this angle will be 60 degree like that because it is a bidirectional scan one uh, different di bidirectional scan it is following. So, in this case, but it is expected the solidification pattern is uh, something like that uh, we observe the maximum heat flow direction here we, we are showing there. But uh, in this case that is not always actually oriented with reference to the, the preferred growth direction it is may not be following in the solidification pattern 1. So, in this case the solidification uh, it is not the may not possible to do the solidification behavior for bidirectional scan is exactly following the pattern 1. Here you can see that the comments on this thing that figure A direction of the maximum heat flow is the alternate laser curling direction that we already observe that uh, represented by the, the yellow vector. For each layer the dendritic growth are influenced by the direction of the scanning definitely the direction of the scan we can see the unidirectional of the scanning if the growth direction is the maximum heat flow direction. But always again try to follow the easy growth direction which is aligns to very close to the maximum heat flow direction that we see and at the that is usually occurs at the solid liquid interface. But in that case if it is like that then it has to follow the competitive grain growth during the solidification process. So, I mean to say that if it is rather maximum heat flow direction and the easy growth direction are the uh, is aligned to the, the same direction then it need to follow some kind of the competitive grain, grain growth along this direction and that is true in case of the unidirectional laser scanning system. So, but if the angles for the maximum heat flow direction with the horizontal is around 60 degree with reference to the that we have ob ob already observed in, in this particular figure that it makes some uh, this angle 60 degree for the unidirectional scan. Now, when you are talking about the different primary dendritic growth pattern in case of the bidirectional laser scanning system, in this case the solidification pattern uh, indicate that we just try to follow the solidification pattern 1, I am talking about the solidification pattern 1 first pattern. Here you can see that that primary dendritic trunks is usually coinciding with the direction of the maximum first first layer when you are depositing that it is the coinciding with the direction of the maximum heat flow that is very true. But the angle between the primary dendritic trunks to the neighboring layer is around 120 degree we, what we observe in this case the solidification pattern 1, but it is not possible but or maybe it is not inconsistent in this particular situation. So, usually the solidification pattern 1 does not occur and the logic behind this thing we can say that the driving force for the nucleation to create the nucleation is much more as compared to the driving force for the required grain growth. So, that is why the pattern 1 is not exactly uh, follow in case of the solidification pattern 1 is in simple simply it does not occur. In, in, in this part bidirectional laser scanning. Now, if we are talking about the solid, uh, solidification pattern 2, here you can see the primary dendritic of the neighboring layers grow perpendicular to each other. So, 
here you can see that first layer depositing it is making the maximum heat flow direction making the 60 degree and the maximum heat flow direction is aligned to the easy growth direction also 0 1 1 in this particular direction for the FCC metal. And then it you try to follow like that again it is a part in the uh, with reference to the secondary dendritic arm that is going to try to follow it is make 30 degree angle here and it is also the because in the second layer the direction scan are different in this case. So, initially I assume this is the direction can and second one it is direction cans are different. So, therefore, it will try to follow like that uh, in this case such that this angle is actually 60 degree and this is also easy growth direction try to follow uh, zero, 1 0 0 direction and same again this thing and but in these two cases this become perpendicular uh, such that it is in compliance with the because primary dendritic arm and the secondary dendritic arm formation is makes the angle of the 90 degree. So, that is why it will try to follow that and again go for the easy growth direction. So, in this case the solidification pattern is usually follow a grain with the having the initial orientation of the 60 degree. So, this is the this is more uh, favorable or more feasible to occur. Uh, the uh, in case of the solidification of the multi uh, 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 bi direction laser scanning system. So, here you can see that orientation of the grain is the first layer def definitely that is consistent with the maximum heat flow direction that we observe. The therefore, initiation of the primary dendritic arm in the secondary layer take the advantage of the secondary dendritic arm of the first layer. So, accordingly the growth will occur and grow epitaxial on, on them. So, that we observe that is so why it may be consistent in the uh, other layer with reference to that. So, that is why it is usually occurs. Now, if we look into the solidification pattern 3, here you can see that in the solidification pattern 3 uh, usually occurs the somehow similar condition of the solidification pattern 2, but the except the grain orientation in the first layer is which is around 45 degree. If the grain orientation in the first layer is around 45 degree, we can say the the heat flow direction the uh, it is may not be the maximum heat flow direction, but easy growth direction 0 1 1 and then it is follow perpendicular to that 0 1 1 it is a perpendicular to that. So, in compliance with the primary and secondary dendritic arm flow, but angle are different grain with the initial orientation is a 45 degree. So, it is also feasible, but with reference to the maximum heat flow direction there is a deviation of around 50, 15 degree because 60 minus 45. So, deviation is around 15 degree in this particular uh, solidification pattern 3. So, that is observed, but all this analysis is possible to do the uh, performing the heat transfer analysis and uh, in that case we can get the, uh, not only heat transfer analysis because only heat transfer analysis may not give the accurate result of the temperature distribution. So, to some extent we need to incorporate the material flow behavior also such that more precisely we can predict the temperature distribution and that temperature distribution we try to make the analysis of the solidification pattern in case of the unidirectional and the bidirectional laser canning system in case of the powder bed fusion process. Now, some uh, content uh, 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 now we try to shift the, the solidification behavior of the wire arc additive manufacturing process. So, definitely uh, the this philosophically uh, this parameters and all the solidification uh, in principle the solidification behavior more or less will be the same as compared to the powder based technology, but there is a little difference and some point of time. So, this it is a kind of the, the variation might occur with reference to the types of the material to are utilizing this thing. So, here also when you trying to discussing uh, the wear arc additive manufacturing process the solidification behavior definitely indicated by the G by R ratio here also. G by R ratio and of course, G very high G by, uh, G by R ratio G means the temperature gradient R is the, the growth rate that ratio will if it is very high then planar front will be more stable in this uh, in this particular case. But the when planar front is not uh, stable, but at the same time there might be having some constant supercooling criteria for the planar front of the solidification that means constant supercooling is very low. But planar solidification front prevails in this case G by R ratio will be very very high and this is as compared to the this ratio delta T by D ratio because delta T by D, D ratio to some extent it is actually this a uh, this ratio or the magnitude or uh, with respect to the slope uh, this actually indicates the amount of the constitutional supercooling. So, the it will suppress the constitutional supercooling if G by R ratio is very 
high value, high range. So, here delta D is the equilibrium range of the solidification temperature and D is the solute diffusion coefficient of the carbon, the solute diffusion coefficient D is the carbon within the liquid iron. So, in case of the steel. So, this is the D value. Now, if we calculate the G by R ratio simple then that actually even some critical value we can estimate and we can extend what can be the critical value of the G by R and G by R critical value can be equal to the delta T by R if we calculate. Now, based on that so low value of the G by R can be in this not in the very stable planar front in that case it transforms to the cellular structure cellular to the uh, dendritic and equiac structure uh, columnar uh, equiac structure can be can form if the very low value of the G by R. Now, if uh, we observe that if I G bar uh, usually if we follow only the heat conduction uh, model. So, if we calculate the temperature distribution uh, by solving the heat conduction equation in that case usually higher G by R value usually predicted uh, by the model because in that case we are neglecting the metal flow or mixing of the liquid mixing of the um, uh, metal uh, when you create some kind of the uh, um, molten pool. So, since we neglecting the mixing of the liquid, so the predicted by the only conduction based heat transfer model the G by R is usually high. So, that is why uh, it is necessary to incorporate the metal flow behavior to calculate the G by R ratio from the temperature distribution is a in, uh, uh, from a heat transfer heat transfer and fluid flow model. Now, if you use the usually if you try to li link with the uh, this thing what can be the C G by R value. Uh, the what is the influence of the different parameters on that we can we can see that wider and long molten pool. So, when you very wider and long molten pool will be created definitely it requires a high amount of the laser power to do that. And when it is like that at the high result it actually lowers the temperature gradient. So, in this case G value lowers when the wider and a very high power is usually used. So, therefore, we can say that G by R because keeping the same uh, similar same values of the laser scanning speed. So, in that case G by R is basically decreases um, uh, with the uh, at very high power. So, we can say that G by decreases with the uh, arc power uh, in, in this case. Now, G by R decreases with the travel speed also and R increases with the travel speed because R is always in uh, compliance with the travel speed. So, when very high welding speed arc welding speed we, we use it in that case R value will be the higher. So, even R value is the higher means the G by R is actually lower. So, in that case G by R decreases with the travel speed as R increases with the travel speed. So, therefore, we can see that G both either power increases or the high scanning speed or arc speed if you utilize both the cases G by R value actually reduces. So, when G by R value reduces then it transforms to the uh, the cellular structure, columnar structure or equiac structure gradually it forms. But if it is it was observed when there is a wire feed rate change in the wire feed rate and wire diameter. So, that is not much having influence on these two solidification parameters. So, or and not much effect of the heat transfer of the molten pool. So, basically G by R is not much sensitive to the change in the wire feed rate and the wire diameter, but G by R is much sensitive by changing in the uh, arc power and by changing in the uh, arc velocity or not arc velocity basically welding velocity in this case or travel speed uh, in this case. So, therefore, this way overall we can get the impact of the different the most important parameters associated with the uh, wire arc additive manufacturing process and based on that we can see what can be the uh, G by R ratio and similar way we can what we discuss in the powder based technology also we can calculate G by R ratio and we can predict the different type of the uh, solidified structure prevails in case of the wire arc additive manufacturing process. Now, here I pick up two uh, different materials, two different types of the materials and to, to understand what kind of the microstructure is usually formed after solidification in a uh, wire arc additive manufacturing process. So, here uh, stainless steels were actually uh, deposited uh, using the wire arc additive manufacturing process and the diameter of the 1.2 millimeter the wire diameter in this in this case if we deposit uh, 316 stainless steel 
you see that grains usually grow nearly along the vertical direction. So, uh, we can see the grain growth is uh, direction we can very easily see from the figure also. So, it is uh, usually occurs near the vertical direction grain growth is usually occurs. Other observation the ferrite distributes within the austenitic matrix that we can observe we know that ferrite uh, austenitic matrix the gamma matrix austenitic structure in, in case of the steel. So, ferrite is actually remains within the austenitic matrix and ferrite is usually uh, the represented by the grey color usually we observe the grey color in this particular case. Now, if you see the different structure the cellular structure usually occurs at the adjacent to the fusion line. So, cellular structures is usually occurs they are adjacent to the fusion line, but the cellular structures develops in the fine columnar form structure and it is far away from the fusion line. So, far away from the fusion line cellular structure usually form, but it is usually fine in this particular case and now the fine columnar structure is also observed which is uh, developed into a coarse columnar structure, a coarse columnar structure, but uh, this fine columnar structure is within the coarse columnar structure in this in this particular case we observe here uh, this thing uh, try to analyze the this uh, this structure of a 316 st uh, stainless steel. Now, secondary dendritic arm we, we usually observe the secondary uh, um, that clearly observed further away from the fusion line. So, secondary dendritic arm usually observe away from the fusion line in this particular case. So, these are the one particular uh, of course, the structure uh, solid wise structure depends on the other parameters also that what are the different um, this um, welding speed and, um, and that uh, po uh, power arc power we, we usually use based on that the structure can forms also and of course, it depends on the the calculation of the temperature gradient prevails, what is the cooling rate, cooling rate actually decide whether it is fine structure or coarse structure is usually formed. But the, this is just an example of 316 stainless steel wire that these are the different type of the microstructure we, observe, we can see that the delta ferrite or austenitic matrix. So, delta ferrite is embedded within the austenitic matrix usually this kind of structure and solidification morphology can be cellular here and columnar also we usually observe. And of course, it means that here the G by R ratio is usually less uh, uh, in this particular case that is why you can always transition cellular or cellular to the columnar structure we observe and primary dendritic arm, secondary dendritic arm also observe uh, this particular uh, structure, particular process. Now, we discuss in another cases uh, in case of the solidification of wire arc additive manufacturing process, here you can see that here the gas metal arc welding process is uh, converted to the, the wire arc additive manufacturing metal deposition and the uh, shielding gas is around 80 percent argon and 20 percent CO2 that we observe and, and the wire diameter is 0 0.8 millimeter, but wire is the low carbon steel, material is the low carbon steel, but current range varies between the 100 to 180, 180 ampere. So, there are so many others the wire arc additive manufacturing parameters. But this is just uh, to this material and uh, type we are focusing on the what kind of the uh, thermal behavior temperature uh, changes in this particular case and of course, the how structure depends on the, the tool path here the that what you have deposited the material that is also having some influence. So, here we can use that uh, uh, trochodial uh, trajectory that means, it is a kind of the overlapping. So, it is a kind of the this kind of the profile the deposition is like that. So, so many overlapping is there uh, during the deposition. So, with this particular path we achieve one particular uh, uh, structure and almost near homogeneous structure we, we can predict in case of the low carbon steel deposition following the gas metal arc welding deposition or I can say that following the 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 wire arc additive manufacturing process using the gas metal arc welding system. Now, if that just an observation if you see if we follow this temperature distribution during the deposition and using the infrared camera, we see that how the temperature changes here T equal to 30 seconds this is the span of the temperature of course, the we can see the temperature depends upon the color also the color but if we follow then we can get uh, this particular it is around I think it is around 70 to uh, 8. 
800 to 800 degree centigrade. So, if you see at t equal to 30 sec t equal to 60 second, t equal to 90 second and 120 second. So, t equal to 180 second this, this particular color is disappear. So, it takes 180 seconds in around uh, 3 minutes uh, to cool down this reach to particular temperature. So, definitely uh, it is having the cooling rate in this particular case might be having very high cooling rate if we calculate this particular process. So, once it is cooling rate is very heavy or very high, so definitely it is having some influence of the solidified structure uh, during the deposition of the this low carbon steel. Now, if you see further on that, we observe uh, this thing the red mark zone is basically a transition from the fine to coarse grain observed and that is for the heat affected zone and that usually happen between the two successive layers, consecutive layers if we can observe this kind of the structure. And then zone C, we see that zone C is disclose a band of the coarse grain structure, coarse grain structure in the form of a band, but having width of the around 1.5 millimeter. So, this kind of structure we observe at the zone C. Zone D, we can see that formation of the fine equiac structure above the heat affected zone. So, this observe fine equiac structure is usually observe. Zone E that had in this case it is corresponds to the heat affected zone, but it is characterized by the coarse grain structure and elongated along the build direction. So, coarse grain structure elongated along the build direction because it is quite obvious because if you observe the last that the in this case the grains are grow nearly to the vertical direction. So, similar kind of the phenomena you can observe and, and this in this particular zone and the coarse grain structure in the sense that here, but of course, average grain size is the 50 micrometer. So, although we are talking about you are considering this as a coarse grain structure, but average grain size is around 50 micrometer. Now, zone F, zone F is the uniform distribution of the fine and equiax grain is observed and scan zones lines within the previously deposited layer here you can see. So, it means that almost uniform distribution of the fine equiax grains is observed in this particular zone. So, I mean to say that of course, when you are depositing layer by multiple layers also and we follow certain uh, tool path, it actually melting and remelting easily happens and so many overlapping. Uh, of the material deposition is there. So, that actually influence the, the structure and of course, in this case we can expect the more fine grain structure is usually because all the cooling rate usually is very high. Now, heat affected zone and the uh, this uh, heat affected zone we can find the, the there is a fine equiax kind of the structure above the heat affected zone, but in the heat affected zone we can say the elongated grain we usually observe. But although we are talking about the coarse grain, the, the average grain size is 50 micrometer in this in this case. So, even other other position the this uh, zone uh, this uh, grain size is even less than that of the 50 micrometer. But once we of this uh, this is the macro graph we observe and this kind of the structure overall structure in the depositor component uh, I, I just explained you. Uh, uh, all this kind of the structure you observe, but more if you further zoom it this particular zone we can get very that different type of the microstructure usually form associated with the low carbon steel. So, here we will try to look into the follow this particular figure. We see that significant fraction of the ferrite with the pearlite as the secondary phase has been observed in the top layer. So, top layer the significant fraction of the ferrite along with the Parallelite, but in this case, parallelite we are considering as a secondary phase on the top layer we observe. So, ferrite and parallelite structure is observed, and of course, in this case, formation of the degenerate parallelite size. So, degenerate parallelites uses usually occurs less than 5 micrometer. So, that gain size is less than 5 micrometer, and degenerate parallelite uh, is um, usually observed in this particular structure or in this particular additive manufacturing process. I will talking about the what is regenerate parallelite later on, but first we observe this other structure and definitely high rate of the cooling is usually first few years usually occurs and therefore, a reduced fraction of the equi equilibrium parallelite structure is found in the at the bottom zone. So, so, definitely the high usually high cooling rate occurs in the very few first few layers as compared to the other layers and, and gradually uh, increasing the layer the actually cooling rate is gradually decreases. But in this case, first few years we observe the reduced fraction of the equilibrium parallelite structure. So, parallelite structure observed, but it is a with the reduced fraction uh, in this particular zone. And uh, we even for the microscope, we observe an alternate lamellar distribution of the 
ferrite and the cementite we know that that actually represents the perlite structure but whereas in this case the is the usual uh, only perlite we are talking about the lamellar distribution of ferrite and cementite but when you are talking about the degenerate perlite uh, also observed in this particular structure but it is consist of the uh, colony of the fine cementite particles with an intermediate ferrite phase intermediate ferrite phase observed along with the colony of the fine cementite particle is observed and that is the typical characteristic of the degenerate pyrolyte structure associated with this deposition of the low carbon steel. Now what is degenerate pyrolyte? So degenerate pyrolyte is, is typically formed due to the deficiency of the carbon because in this particular uh, deficiency of carbon when nucleation occurs and we observe this part low carbon steel the carbon percentage is very low. So even is uh, around 0.128 percent of the carbon in this particular. So therefore with this condition it is possible to develop some degenerate perlite structure uh, during this particular uh, wire arc additive manufacturing process and it is believed that this particular structure is forms uh, because of the particular tool path we are following uh, that is why we are getting this kind of the structure. Now degenerate pellet is formed even low carbon steel that is observed and then the in the environment of the relatively rapid solidification. So carbon per, low carbon percentage along with the very rapid solidification uh, is the favorable condition to form the degenerate pellet and of course one once it is for and at the other condition is that it actually occurs almost similar amount of the uh, equal amount of the temperature gradient is the cyclic melting and the remelting. So there is not much difference in the temperature gradient due to the cyclic melting and remelting of a structure because it is cyclic melting and remelting occurs because of this particular tool path we are following. So that is why we are getting uh, this kind of the degenerate perlite uh, in low carbon steel. So this is one type of the structure we observe. Now so far we discuss. Uh, this thing uh, that what are the solidification behavior in additive manufacturing process associated with the powder and the solidification behavior in case of the wire act additive manufacturing process and we know that all these cases we always try to look into what is the values of the in general the solidification parameter G and R and what is the ratio of the G and R and what is the uh, um, values of the G into R because that actually all this uh, combination of these two parameters decides the mode of the solidification and the uh, whether it is fine structure or the coarse structure that is also decided by the G into R value. So therefore when you analyze the solidification behavior of the either welding process or additive manufacturing process our first attempt to calculate two values of the G by R and we just check this G by R value and based on that we make some conclusion what kind of the structure whether planar font is possible or planar in the then it is converted to the cellular form uh, structure cellular structure or columnar structure is usually form and that I have tried to explain you taking the different uh, experiment also and microstructure we observe along with the we take the help of some simulation simulated results also, and then we can see that what kind of the structure depending upon the G and R value associated with the uh, solidification process. Now we will try to see the to understand the this uh, additive manufacturing process we will try to show you some kind of the simulation of the additive manufacturing process. Here you can uh, see that uh, to understand the how it occurs. So you see there is a deposition of the material and how that temperature variation occurs along the path if you see it is a create kind of the bead. So all, of course in this case we use the element activation deactivation techniques also and the one layer is deposited and above the there is another layer is depositing and we can see the how the temperature is one sided temperature develop and other side is gradually it is cooling. And of course if we take in this case one part we fixed one particular uh, position over the space we fix the particular point and there if we track the time versus temperature diagram and from there we can estimate the this uh, uh, cooling rate and particular position and of course we can take the different cross section we can measure the temperature of this different cross section and of course one particular point and then every time we can we can calculate the the temperature gradient or um, uh, this particular point and uh, from the time temperature diagram we can estimate the cooling rate. So simulation will help to estimate the G and R parameters also directly uh, and that G R R parameter we can utilize to predict the solidification behavior solidified structure in case of the uh, different additive manufacturing process. So here see 
that gradually layer by layer deposition here the extent of the heat affected zone is actually increasing. Uh, uh, once we uh, um, try to deposit the material, the we increase the layer. But of course, in this case, we are uh, not following any kind of the the temperature. The profile we are assuming in the top profile as a flat profile. This is simplify the modeling approach because if you want to do, take the actual profile, we need to go for the some free surface profile modeling approach also, and that is computationally very expensive. And we are we are not showing this thing, but here you can understand that how the deposition occurs and the uh, gradually there is an increment of the layer height with the application of the the it can be it can be simulated for the you can assume is a laser source uh, because any anyway representing the in in the form of a flux to the domain solution domain so we can assuming the laser source or we can assuming the it is a wire arc attitude man, a wire arc also so this simple simulation can be performed uh, both the cases see there is another simulation also the similar kind of the path it's a high speed the laser is moving uh, this cases and intentional we can make some gap also to understand the deposition for the next layer but of course we can design the path so we can design the path and we can deposit the layer uh, one by one uh, associated with the uh, laser. now the second layer is moving and then the second layer is deposited using the laser and of course in this case we are not explicitly looking the focusing on the uh, powder uh, that uh, powder projecting Rather, we can say that although it is a directed energy, the simulation is incorporated for directed energy deposition process over the substrate. But here, uh, we are not showing explicitly, we are just simply considering some finite volume over the layer, and that finite volume with the keep on adding the volume and that is equivalent to the uh, powder flow or maybe flow rate of the powder. We have to make some balance of the flow rate of the powder, and that amount is deposited on the substrate, and we just keep on activating. Uh, this uh, particular layer uh, gradually in front of the when laser is moving in front of the laser is keep on activating the the path and then accordingly it is showing the deposition of the material in directed energy deposition process. Of course, uh, this uh, designing of the path is required because special path and uh, the application of the heat source that has to be moved with respect to the substrate material. So, in that case uh, if you use some kind of the software also we can utilize the some uh, this thing that uh, user subroutine and we can define the path in the small program we can write in that user subroutine and you can perform the simulation and this simulation can we can do perform the simulation for the thermomechanical simulation or only the temperature analysis can also be done. Here you can see that another simulation also or wire arc attitude manufacturing if you see this path here path is different if you see keep on filling this so the gradually it is filling and you can see the what is the extent of the temperature distribution the surrounding the uh, su substrate material. So, keep on adding the material to the domain gradually and it is depositing here and we can track the temperature distribution also we can even in between there is a need to increase the speed also. So, that is that is also possible and that is a one kind of the strategic approach in additive manufacturing process. So, in between we can we can the processing speed can be high also. So, that can also be controlled and it can be slow also depending upon the requirement or other uh, uh, issues associated with the uh, this additive manufacturing process deposition. Now, you see all information will be able to get. Uh, if we perform this simulation, so at any point, at any uh, time, or each and every point, and one particular time, we'll get the information of the temperature distribution. And of course, and this temperature distribution is valid for this particular design of the path. So all this flexibility is there in the modeling approach. If we perform the model, so slow speed, very high speed, uh, along with the temperature distribution, even you can perform the possible the mechanical analysis also we can see after deposition what is the distribution of the stress so that is also possible to see uh, using this simulation process. But we need to follow of course if in this case we consider only the thermal analysis. So of course we are not considering any fluid flow phenomena in this case only heat conduction equation we are solving but along with the designing of the path we can get the particular area filled by the deposition and one, one track and multiple layer multiple multi track also deposition is uh, we are following and see when at which point it is depositing 
here you can see the red zone mean near about that zone is the melting gradually and other part is gradually keep on solidifying uh, uh, solidification occurs. So, temperature when moves subsequently the other part is gradually reducing the temperature. So, basically it is a solidification to occurs when you are depositing the material at this particular front where the depositing of the material is there. So, with this simulation we can see that all possible uh, results extraction is possible here. Now, you see this is the deposition is going on till we get some temperature this thing. Now, gradually now this following the cooling phase and it is cooled down to the ambient temperature. So, that means that is also needed also this is the final deposited solidified structure that we can see over the substrate material complete simulation we can understand this thing. I think that is all uh, for this particular module and uh, um, next we will try to discuss the, the, the next module we will try to discuss the very practical applications of the solidification behavior for the different solidification techniques developed following the solidification theory. So, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.